Hello everyone, welcome back, I'm Eric, and today I'm gonna to show you through how I motorize and DCC fit my kit-built tube trains. Now, I don't know if you follow my London Underground Model Railways page on Facebook. It's uh, an open page for anyone to use that's into this sort of side of the hobby. Underground modeling is quite a niche market, so the majority of models you see will be kit-built or alternatively modified EFE models. Now, for most of the tube trains, you use a Tenshodo W26B. So let's have a look at what we do. So, motorizing one of these tube trains is quite simple to do if you run on DC. You will start off with a coach like this, where it's got the standard EFE bogies. Now, bear in mind, this is a static model. These bogies, you can see I've also got one here, separate to show you. They are not built to be run on a model railway. The wheels, have very deep flanges and they don't have any bearings to run in so they create a lot of friction so the first thing you want to be doing is upgrading those so that this model will actually roll you can see it doesn't want to go anywhere this one has the upgraded bogies so you can see the difference there obviously that's going to make it a lot easier for our little ten shodo bogey to actually pull this train along so if i flip these over to show you the difference now, as I said, this has the standard EFE bogies, but this one has been upgraded with Metro models, plastic molded bogies with upgraded wheels. And it also has brass top hat bearings, which are an optional extra. You don't have to fit those. Now I've also got a spare one of these to show you up close. So this is the bogey in question. This doesn't have the brass bearings fitted. So you can see the little pinpoints there that stick out of the molding. Now, basically the end of the axles fit in those and the bogey just runs along very, very smoothly because there's not a lot of surface area contacting from those axles to the bogey frame. So they really do push along quite nicely and they free up your vehicle quite a lot. Whereas these ones, nothing. They're basically just solid. <laughs> but these, as I said, they're from Metro models. They aren't too expensive but they are 100% worth doing if you're going to go at it properly on one of these models you're never going to get it to run right with these bogies you can take the spring out of the inside to help free them off a little but they're still not going to be great but what you need to do on these is so you will get one of these kits like this you can either as I said chop the ends off and fit the brass pinpoint bearings or just run them as they are so you fit the wheels in you need to then take your original bogies and you need to take a blade and cut the bogey side frame off and you then basically glue it to the side of the replacements. Now you might have to use a little drill bit or a countersink just to make a little divot in the back of the bogey frame itself so it will fit over the axle cones and then it should glue on perfectly fine. So that's the basic thing. You also obviously need to fit your motor, which comes in a packet with a bracket for fitting it to the body. And it will come with some mounting screws, as well as obviously the screw to mount the bracket to the motor. Do not lose that. But yeah, anyway, these are set up for DC operation straight out of the box. So what we're going to do is just show you first how you mount them into one of the body shells. And secondly, what you do to modify them for DCC operation. So here is one mounted into a chassis. Now it's only loosely in there, so it's not perfectly in the middle. So take that with a pinch of salt, but you'll see that you've had to cut out a big square here for the motor to sit in and have enough movement to move side to side. Now there are measurements for this. If you buy one of these off Metro models or Radley models, I'm sure they'll help you out with how big a hole you need to cut, but this should give you an idea. You can always refer back to that compared to that, which is the standard setup. So obviously you cut out whole square and obviously leave some of the side to leave a bit of strength in the body. And uh, so it's continuous. You don't want to chop the whole end off. But this is the sort of thing you do with a Dremel because they are a die cast chassis. So they're quite tough and you're going to be there all day if you try and do that with a hacksaw. You're never going to get it in there. So find a Dremel and do it that way. That's the easiest way. Obviously wear eye protection. You need to get the distance for the mounting holes correct as well, but that's something that you can sort of eye up. If you, if I was to put this in the right sort of place, which is well, slightly further back than that, basically the bend on the 
mountain bracket is roughly in the same place as where you would make your cut across. So it just gives you an idea. Obviously you would drill through in the middle and you need to make some holes in this underframe piece in the bottom for your nut and bolts to go through. So once you've done that and you've got your standard 10 shoulder motor mounted, if you put it back together now, it should run on the DC track. But obviously, as I said, you wanna be upgrading those trailer bogies. So what you would do is if you just get a small screwdriver with a flat blade on it, put it under the bogey, they pop out, they just clipped in. Then your replacement one, basically on an EFE model, you need to cut this top section off and then you need to cut out the center of your existing bogies. So you'll see this and doing that, you then glue them together and that will leave you with this. So you will have the correct clip in there. So you see, I've just glued that onto the underneath. Make sure you glue it the right way up for obvious reasons. <laughs> I've done that before. Not a mistake I wanna make again. And you glue it in from underneath, not on top, because otherwise the distance between the body and the bogey frame will be wrong. So then you will just fit it as the standard ones are fitted. Just clips in like that. And there you go, that is it. So that's your trailer bogey upgraded with nice wheel sets. You've got the side frames on there, as we spoke about earlier. You've got your powered bogey in there. And then if you put that together, they go together very easily, these EFE units. If you put that together like that, three screws, one at the front, two at the back, put that on a DC track, that'll run quite happily. So now that we've got that out of the way, I will get rid of the dinosaur livery one, which is completely standard, because we've established that we should be fitting trailer bogies, which are upgraded, as this one has. So we'll keep with that one, just so that you can see it there. This is one that I'm part way through DCC fitting, so to start off with, the most important thing is the motor itself. Now, as we were talking about, this is a 10 Shodo W26B. They're all the same pretty much. You can now get a cordless version as well. Now the DC motors, they've got the pickups on the side, which you can see. So these are the pickup contacts and they go behind the wheel. I don't know if you can see the way they are sprung onto the wheel there. You probably can't but they go behind the wheel set and they just make contact with the back of the wheel. Now these come down here and they go inside the motor casing and up and they make contact with the motor inside. So basically it creates a dead short and that is how the motor is powered. On DCC, it's completely different. All this is done through a decoder. So you need to separate this. Now it's very easy to do. So what you need to do, obviously I'm gonna to have to do it with this one. So let's do it on camera. I'll just take that little screw out that's in the bottom of the motor. And you get a little screwdriver in there. You can pop the casing off. Don't be too scared to do this. Just be a bit gentle, obviously. So there you go, the bottom cover comes away. You can then, uh, you don't have to have this in. This is a bracket for fitting bogey side frames if needed. Or obviously you'll see this one has also got screws in. So it's got a couple of different methods of doing it. You can also use uh, the pinpoint axles on the end of the wheel sets if fitted. So these ones have been cut down. But basically there's three ways of mounting a bogey on this. This is just one of them. So you're left with that open at the bottom. Pull the wheels out. Very easy. They just slide out like that. You'll then see the pickups that I was referring to. So you see they sit behind the wheels and just contact on there. And then in here, we've got the motor. So you wanna to go to up to the top and make sure these little tabs that stick out are straight. So you can just bend them with a screwdriver. So I'll just bend them up like that. And once they're straight, you should be able to remove this motor. It's a bit fiddly, but it will come out. If I just get something in there to lever it out with one end two and there you go and the motor literally just pulls out like that and that is it so that is your motor there now it was sitting this way up in the bogey 
and obviously we've still got the body shell of the motor bogey sat there with the pickups coming down and as i said you'll see inside these pickups if i zoom in these pickups come down here they loop over and you can just see that they go inside so without pulling it off of the mountain lug that you've got here you want to just bend it back straight so like that you just get some snips like this and you just cut it off like that and that's that done and now you can put your motor back in so just put it the right way up the motor has the two lugs sticking out the top so it just slots in like that and then you can just bend these over slightly like so and that will stop the motor falling back out so that's that back installed again now you need to put the wheel sets back in i would take this opportunity to put a little drop of watchmakers oil or something on the worm drives if you can don't use white grease like i've done before because it actually just gums them up and it stops them working sufficiently so to put the wheel sets in you need to be careful of the little sprung pickups they're very easy to get caught so you want to sort of drop them in there it's very fiddly to do but you basically hold it like that get your little flat blade screwdriver and then just push the pickup behind the wheel on either side it's very fiddly now the problem is you've got that one in you need to do the other one and it's very easy for them to pop out again so try and sort of hold on to that one and hold it in there while you do the second so you sort of get an idea what i'm doing there so that one's gone in there you go and this one that's popped out again there we go so that's that in now we need to put the top cover on which is just clipped on but there is also a little small screw on most of these they don't all have it some of them have a little pin just to locate but that should just sit on there and that cover just clips on like you see there so what we've now done is if you put this on a dc track now it won't do anything because the power from the pickups is completely isolated from the power on the motor so obviously first things first with DCC, you need to think about what decoder you're gonna use. So if you're just going for regular DCC, you wanna use a fairly decent brand decoder if you can afford it, get the best you can afford. It is worth it, they uh, tend to run a bit better. And you need to look at something that's actually gonna fit somewhere where you can sort of hide it. You don't want it just taking up the whole of the uh, interior of the car. So what I've done previously um, is ignore this one because I've done this a different way. But I will usually fit a decoder socket in one of the doorways and then I'll fit the decoder itself in the other. So your regular lock sound decoders from ESU are this sort of size. The only problem with this is it's actually a little bit big. So if you see there, widthways, it's too wide to actually go in. So if you was to get a decoder the same as this, you would have to fit it sort of across the seats and you're going to be able to see that. So a normal decoder that size is out of the question, for me anyway. You can get ones like Gauge Master and that who are a bit shorter or older lock pilot chips are sometimes a bit smaller and they will fit in there. Obviously ignore the fact it's got no socket on it, but that would squeeze in there if you needed it to. But what I'm going for is a Lock Sound V5 Micro. You can also get what's called a Lock Pilot Micro and it's basically the same sort of thing, but it's in a smaller packaging. So you can fit this easily in there. You can uh, even fit it in between the seating like it, what I did on my other 1938 stock that I did. And it gives you a bit more of an option to hide it. The thing is if you put, if you fill this area up with the electronics, you can just put a little piece of black tape over the top. And then once it's all together, you're not gonna notice it because obviously the height of the windows in the doors is above this point. So you can cover that over and you won't even notice it as long as it's below sort of the level where you look into the vehicle but yeah basically i'm going to probably fit sound in this one as i have this decoder spare this is a brand new lock sound v5 top of the range decoder and uh, there's a chap i know called legoman biffo well that's his uh, sort of business name and he's currently developing a sound file for 1938 stocks so that's pretty cool but uh, i will probably put that in and uh, i'll have the speaker up next to where the doorway would be and the guards panel and it'll be hidden nicely and then I'll probably have the decoder down in this little area somewhere hidden out of the way. You don't have to fit sound in, obviously. You can fit a regular decoder, like I say. 
you could fit something like that and that'll go straight in and you can cover it over, you won't see it. So as I said, I usually use an eight pin decoder. The reason for this is this is a 21 pin decoder here and this is the socket that you need to plug a 21 pin decoder in and it's a lot bigger. You're not actually gonna fit that in. Well, I mean, you could mill out a slot underneath the seats, similar to what I've done with this eight pin one here so that it would sit on the floor in this position. The problem you've got then is if you've got that sitting on the floor, the decoder then plugs into the top of it in a 21 pin, like so. Obviously it's very low profile. The trouble is the size of it is you're gonna to have to cut away some of the seating. You can see that it's not gonna fit. And you're also not gonna get it in width ways because you would need this PCB in like that. So that is the reason I go with eight pin sockets. And these sockets that I get, both types are from Illuminated Models. This is their little logo. They've got a little website, which is on the back there. There's their contact details. So they're worth checking out. They do these little eight pin decoder sockets and they're really good because they're nice and compact. You've got all the solder points, easily accessible. And you've also got an indication of which socket is pin one. On the back, it shows you which solder point refers to what function on the decoder. So what I used to do, because these are nice and small, I would actually fit one of these and glue it into the floor of the train here. I would then wire everything into that. And then you simply come along, you can take your decoder, you would plug it in and then run your wires along the middle and then sit the decoder in the opposite doorway. Obviously, uh, it's a bit hard to do it without putting it all in properly, but you sort of get the idea. I would run the wires all the way down the center of the floor, put a bit of black tape over them so you can't see them, and then have the decoder housing there. So that's the, sort of the neatest way that I used to do it, but now I've tried something different, where I have actually taken the seating part away and I fit the decoder socket straight into the floor to get this to fit, I have cut a square out of the underneath of the floor area, and that then fits neatly over the top there. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna leave one of the doorways free because I'll be able to fit the decoder in probably this one because it's got a bit of stuff going on anyway with the bracket for the motor bogey. And then I'll be able to leave this one free and put a couple of figures in there. So I basically just uh, get neater as I go along. Every one I do gets a little bit better. So obviously I've done a few now, and you just get used to doing it. But yeah, that's gonna be a nice option. So I suppose we better go and wire it in. One other thing I should probably mention just before we start wiring is you'll see these. These are pickups from DCC Concepts. They come in a little packet. You get quite a few in there. They cost a little bit of money, but they're worth it. The only uh, thing is obviously they're quite fiddly to fit. So these are for the trailer bogey and you obviously need to position them with the wipers on the wheels and then glue them onto the bogey frame themselves. And that gives you pickups on the trailing bogey as well. And it will run so much better if you have all wheel pickup. Obviously, if you're doing anything more than a two car, you're gonna need another motor at least. And the way that I prefer to do it is put two motors in one car, and then you basically wire them both up together so they work in parallel with the decoder. So two motors, one decoder, and it tends to run quite well. But for this one, we only need the single motor, so I will put the pickups on this bogey and a uh, bit of fiddling about, and that should work nicely. As I said, they're from DCC Concepts. You can look them up, uh, I'm sure you'll find them. So there we have the new pickups fitted on the trailer bogey. I just made sure that the centerpiece of the bogey, which is the raised area, was nice and flat, because that's where we were gonna be gluing them onto. And I've just opened up the pickups the right amount. You just, just want them touching the wheels, because they're obviously gonna cause drag. So the more they, they are sprung onto the wheels, the more drag you're gonna have and the more that the train is gonna to struggle to pull this car along. So they work nicely and what I will do is get some decoder wire. So I use red and black for the pickups and I basically just strip the same length as we've got on both of them here and I lay the bare piece of wire across both and solder it to both pieces of uh, the pickups. So that seems to work quite nicely and uh, that should do the job. Obviously, next to it, in the trailer bogies you get from Metro Models, there is a hole already, so I use that hole as a guide, and I just drill an extra hole in the chassis, and that will allow your wires to stick up through, and you just want to leave a little bit of slack on them for enough 
enough for them to pivot and that should do you nicely. So now we've got our pickups on our motor bogey separated. We've got pickups on our trailer bogey with a hole through for our wires to come out. We've got our decoder socket and we've got our motor contacts. So you need to wire that all into this socket now. And uh, I just use regular decoder wire. This is just single core stuff. You can get multi-strand multi decoder cable, which I do prefer, but I got this cheap and it does the job just about. So that's uh, up to you, depending on what your choice of uh, weapon is. Obviously you use a decent soldering iron, and rather than a soldering sponge for your iron, I use one of these. It keeps your iron a lot, lot cleaner. But one thing I must point out on these, if you're gonna use one of these eight pin sockets, be aware that you need some sort of hole in the bottom or to mount it on plastic, because the pins obviously stick out from the underneath. And if you mount this straight to this chassis, bang goes your decoder. So do not forget that. Luckily on these models, the reason I've done this and sunk it into the floor, so first of all was obviously to hide it a bit better, but secondly, this piece here is actually hollow. It sticks out from the bottom and you can just see the pins inside there. And it's the perfect sort of size. So if you can get away with doing that and you can manage to cut the seating area out nice and neatly like I have, then that's gonna work great. So we've got pin one at the top right of your screen there. So luckily I've got this other one here. So pin one it goes to motor right. And then opposite that, we've got track right. So that's handy to remember. So yeah, motor right, top corner, over to this terminal here normally. And then track right, which is this corner, you wanna go to these pickups and also the pickups on this side of the trailer bogey. So you're gonna to need to run two separate wires from this one both going off in different directions, down the body, and then to each bogey. It's the same with the other ones, so you will have the opposite end, you'll have motor left in the bottom left corner, which will obviously go to the top terminal, and then you'll have track left, which will be this one over here, which will then be the same, it'll branch off into two, one side of the bogey, one side of the bogey. So I'm gonna come back when I've wired this in, because I'm sure there's hundreds of videos of people wiring stuff up with a soldering iron on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Something that will make your life easier when doing the wires for the pickups. As I said, you're gonna need two separate wires so that they can go left and right. What will make your life easier is if you get the wires separate, you twist them together, and then you solder them to the contact pad in one go. If you try and solder one to the pad and then the other later, it'll be a lot more difficult. So if you chuck that on there, that's now soldered. You can then uh, untwist them if you need to and then root them however you wish. So I'm probably going to try and do mine under the floor to keep it a little bit neater. It's certainly in this area anyway. And then I'll have to bring them out somewhere because you need a little bit of a loop so that they've got enough movement. There you go, I've sort of got it back together, mostly. Obviously I've not done it as neat as I could have done because what I usually do is use a little bit of heat shrink going up to keep them all together. And uh, then you can also, also sort of run it through the roof and down, but because I've done it this way where it's going under the floor, I'm not able to do that. So what I might do is just put a couple little slots in the seats just so it stays under the seat and then just pokes up at the end before the motor but basically you've got to leave enough slack so that the motor can move side to side and the wires not get trapped. Because otherwise, uh, if they move about too much, they'll snap off. The trailer bogey, I'm just going to do that now. So you see I've got a little bit of slack there. That should be plenty to get me through. And I'm then going to solder them to the pickups now. So I'll just do that quick. Right, there we go then. So that's the trailer bogey wired up. So you can just about see the pickups there. And I've basically wired straight across the pair of them, going onto the same wire. And as I said, obviously you need to leave a tiny bit of slack just so that it can all move side to side. And that should never be a problem now. So that should be good. So if we put a decoder in that socket, in theory, it should run. So let's try it out. So over on the laptop now, I'm just gonna use my lock programmer software because I've got a lock program itself, which is what I use to load sound files on decoders. Uh, I'm quite into all that, so uh, most people won't have this sort of stuff kicking about. But if you uh, were to put it on your track now, 
and this is basically what is going to represent that. Put in address number three for a new decoder and away it should go. And there we go, it's running alright. So if I just put my fingers just on the trailer bogey to hold it down, lift the power bogey up, you can see it's still running so we know the trailer bogey pickups are good. Generally you won't really have problems with the pickups on the motor bogey anyway, so that's fine. And you can see I have fitted that lock sound micro decoder and it's all squeezed in here with just, as I said, a little bit of black tape over the top. So all you've got coming out of here is two speaker wires going to the speaker, which I still need to put the rest of the enclosure on, but it will sit just by the guards compartment. And uh, now that I've done this with putting the socket in the center, I've got all this room if I wanted to fit a stair life. And the stair lives that I fit, I do actually have one here to show you. It's made by a company called Trainomatic. And uh, here it is. So they're quite small. It's about the same size as that decoder. You might notice obviously it's too long to go in that spot. But the good thing about these is the capacitor on the end, you can disconnect it and just put it on some wires. Or you could, if you wanted, bend it over on top of itself. So then I'll be able to put that in there. Or I can put it down the centre if I wanted to. A bit of tape over the top, you'll never know. So yeah, really happy with that. Obviously it's working quite nicely. All that's left to do now is uh, button it back up, put the body on and we can give it a test run. So here we are then, take it with a pinch of salt because I've not completely put it back together properly. I've not put the bogey frame on the motor bogey yet uh, because I'm gonna take it back apart and probably neaten it up a little. And uh, I'm also putting separately fitted hand rails on. But here we go. A typical loud ten shodo fashion, but here it comes. You gotta bear in mind also that the decoder hasn't been set up yet, it's literally just plonked straight in, so it's not the smoothest. But there we go, it works lovely. So there you go, obviously it runs a little bit rough because the motor needs a little bit of TLC. I think it needs a little bit more oil potentially and a bit of running in. But it seems to run okay. Uh, it should sort itself out. Um, good little tip if you're trying to hide wires, you can see what I've done with the speaker wires here. I've run them inside a little piece of heat shrink, but I've not shrunk the heat shrink down. Now this is because if I ever want to remove the speaker, I simply unsolder it and then I can pull the wires back through. Whereas if I uh, actually get some heat on this and shrink it, then you're stuffed. <laughs> but you can see uh, it's nice and neat. And if I was to paint it grey, it would suit with the floor. Uh, so overall it's come out pretty well. I might tidy these up a bit further. In fact, I pretty much definitely will tidy them up a bit more, but they work and they've got enough slack in where it won't put any strain on the wires if they're like this. So it's better to be like that than uh, have them snapping off. The decoder, it's unusual to have a ribbon as the decoder socket. It's the first time I've seen this. So I'm not sure if that's a common thing these days with lock sound uh, decoders. I have to keep an eye out for that because the last one I did in the uh, Island Line 38, that one over there, uh, that had a normal style decoder socket. Uh, so yeah, that's the first time I've seen that. A couple people were asking about headlights and uh, if I just put the body on roughly, what I do, is on this one I am actually converting it. I'm in the process of filling the top headlamps because we won't need them. So you can sort of just see the ghost outline of them where the filler has sunk. I just painted the front yellow just so it looks a bit nicer for the video, but that gives you an idea. And obviously I've taken the handrails off. But um, basically, yeah, drill the headlights out the size of the headlamp itself. Do them with the body off initially. So you take the body off, drill the headlights out, and then um, put the body back on again, like it is now. Get the same drill bit again, and just put it through with your fingers, and just give it a little twist, because that will then give you a mark if I can get this off again. It'll give you a mark on the inside here. And what I do is I don't want to drill all the way through these, but the way I fit the headlights is, is I'll basically have a little indent and then I will get the soldering iron. Make sure the soldering iron is, I use it about 300 degrees, I think it is I use. I've got a temperature control one by Atten, sold through DC Concepts. 
So just turn the uh, temperature down there, hence it's dropping. Um, well, to be fair, I've already done it, so I don't actually need to, but I basically just create three indents here. So not three nice sort of valleys for wiring to sit in. And what I use is I use pre-wired SNDs, which are I think a 603 size. So they're very small. I've got them here somewhere. Let me just get the packet. That should be these ones. Uh, but you get 20 in a pack. I think they're about £7.50 to a tenner-ish. And uh, what I do is I super glue in the LED in place at the end of the little valley. And then I also glue the wiring in the little valley. And then I will run it around here. I will put a little sort of cut out from that corner. And then that'll allow me to run it around the side of here. And then I will do the same thing with the heat shrink that I did over there. I'll run a piece of heat shrink underneath along here. And I will then drill a very small hole through the side of the seating area here. And uh, I'll do that all the way until sort of this area roughly where I will fit a resistor, one for the headlamps and one for the tail lamps. You must keep them separate because otherwise they won't work properly because the uh, red tail lamps will drown out the white LEDs for the headlamps. So two thousand ohm resistors, I use very, very small ones which are like surface mount ones. They're absolutely tiny, similar size to the LEDs actually. And then run those to, again, the DCC socket. Now to do the tail lamps is a lot more difficult. What I do on these is I'll go behind and I will drill a hole on either side, just behind where the tail lamp housing here is. I'll drill a hole here so that there is no material behind this little piece, because if you don't do that, what will happen is your drill bit will reach this and it will either go up or down and snap off. So you need to drill that out. You can drill a nice big hole there. You're never gonna see it. And then you also need to get a file and file off the top where the red paint is because that is a domed sort of surface. So your drill bit again is gonna wander. So you file that flat and then work up with very, very tiny drill bits, making sure you get it in the center. And then basically you want to paint the inside of it so there's no exposed bare metal and then you need to glue in your leds but you need to test them with a multimeter on the diode mode before you actually commit because you might glue them in they might still be shorting out and uh, if you go to all the effort of wiring them in properly and that happens you'll blow them whereas if you test them with a multimeter you won't but basically yeah it's a bit of trial and error and then a bit of black tack in the hole which is basically like a, a more sticky version of blue tack Here's what it looks like. You can get it from uh, eBay or Roads and Rails, sell it. Fill the hole with that. That will then stop everything from moving about and uh, it will keep a bit of slack on the wires in the hole so that any sort of tugging on them won't dislodge the AD. And then I do the same thing with the uh, heat shrink again, except I'll run it along the opposite side. And basically what you're left with is two sets of wires coming out around here somewhere and they'll end up in here so you can always just put a small little false floor in if you want or something like that. So guys, thanks for sticking out the video. It's obviously been a bit of a long one, but hopefully someone has taken something from that and uh, is up for having a go themselves. Obviously you can uh, achieve a decent little runner out of these things, providing you are lucky with a decent 10 Shodo motor. Um, but yeah, have a go yourself. You never know, you might do a good job of it. I will put a link to Metro Models website and Radley Models website in the description. And make sure you go and join my London Underground Model Railways Facebook page if you haven't already. And any questions or comments, leave them down below. Make sure you subscribe also. See you later.